needs to change. 20 million people in the southern provinces since have been uprooted by the worst natural disaster in Pakistan's history. But relief groups are having a hard time getting to them. There are 150,000 square kilometers of land affected by the flood. It means that is the equivalent of Switzerland, Austria, and Belgium all together. This is huge. And there are some places which are still isolated, and we have many difficulties to reach these people. Well, the Red Cross will launch a new appeal on Thursday to try and double the $16 million raised so far. Well, Pakistan's government has warned of a third wave of flooding, just as the country braces for more monsoon rain. Rivers are already flooded, and forecasters warn that two weeks of continuous good weather are needed to bring waterways back to normal levels. Well, food prices in Pakistan could soar as a result of the flooding. Supplies of corn, flour, and rice have been destroyed. And the Christian aid organization Church World Service says it expects vegetable prices to double. Nearly half the country's labor force is employed in agriculture, meaning an even bigger effect on the wider economy. Well, the Pakistan Institute of Development Economics it says if the government cannot act quickly enough, devastated areas could become a recruiting ground for militant groups like Al-Qaeda. The Taliban is among those giving tents and supplies to survivors. The U.S. currently gives Pakistan $7.5 billion to fight extremism, but more may be needed. Well, let's get more on the relief efforts in Pakistan. I'm joined now live on the telephone from Islamabad by Mubashar Hassan. He's an Oxfam coordinator in the region. He's been in Pakistan since 1973, working there. Uh, Mubashar, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, so just tell us, first of all, how much aid is actually getting through to these victims? According to our understanding, until today, more than 6 million people have not been covered by aid. Most not been covered by, by aid given by the uh, Western world. So, uh, in other words, more than 6 million people are still vulnerable. They are on the field, they are hungry, and they are thirsty. So, more cash is needed, we know, for this disaster, but isn't it more important that there is the organization on the ground? I mean, you can have all the cash in the world, you've got to actually be able to physically get the aid to the people. Uh, how is that working out? We are trying. We are, we are trying. We are working in very difficult conditions in many places. For example, uh, you know, many areas of Upper Swat is being shut off due to heavy flooding. However, we are keep pushing and keep trying to keep reach those areas. Our aid workers are working for hours to reach those vulnerable people who have not been eaten for days. But it is important and critical that aid may must come to Pakistan. Now, so one, of the we can yeah. uh, sorry, sorry about that. one of the big fears is that militant groups are going to use this as an opportunity to uh, gain more of a stronghold in certain areas. Uh, they, they are providing, there are reports of militant groups like the Taliban providing tents and food and water to victims. How concerned are you about that? And, and can you tell us about any examples of that? I mean, there are reports that, uh, yes, in some areas, such conditions are taking place. However, we need, must not need to forget that it is a mega disaster and it needs a mega response. 20 million people of the world are now homeless. They are on the street. They are suffering for diseases. Thank you.